Let us prepare for the biggest battle this kitchen has ever seen. Ali Cuisine! This is the moment we have all been waiting for. Welcome to Kitchen Stadium. This is Iron Chef. The challenging chefs already tied their games, coming to prove themselves against the Iron Chefs. The top challenger from the entire competition will be facing off against all five culinary giants in our grand finale. For the chance to claim the title of Iron Legend. Battle! Kristen, Ming, Mark, hi. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, it's really great to meet all of you. Um, so my first question is for you, Mark, uh, you know, a few actors really get to play um, a character for, for as long as you have. So what was it like for you to come back to this role and, and play the chairman again? And I also noticed that you're not at the judges table and you don't get to eat the food this time. So are, are you sad about that? Well, I am sad about that because I do get to watch it on the screen and the food looks incredible. You know, and I hear I hear Alton and, and Kristen talking about it and the judges talking about him like, ah, oh, I want to go down and sneak, you know, maybe I'll do that next season. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was very emotional to come back. Uh, it, I mean, just it was an honor and uh, I'm extremely happy to be sitting with these two and our wonderful cast and crew. So Kristen, I wanted to ask you, what drew you to this particular role of co-hosting with Alton? Um, you know, we, I think we're very familiar with you from competition cooking as well. And so maybe people were expecting you to, to be a challenger in Kitchen Stadium. So can you talk a little bit about just kind of your role and maybe um, what is something that even audiences aren't seeing when you're kind of trying to analyze the battles? Well, I'll answer that part. So what audiences may not be seeing is that there's a lot of time where Elton and I are just like, talking about the most random things. We're having life talks, therapy sessions, the whole thing. And so having a, a friend, not just a colleague or a counterpart is really nice because, you know, the cameras aren't always on us. So we find, you know, time to get to know one another. I think what drew me mostly to this position was when I got the call, before anything was ever said, I said, I'm not cooking. I said, I cannot do it. My anxiety cannot handle it anymore and I'm done. Um, that's that envelopes like sealed signed delivered in the ocean somewhere so um to be part of it in this way is incredibly humbling i grew up watching iron chef iron chef america ming show simply ming like i grew up watching all of these people as a young cook coming up and to be sitting in this position is just unreal to me i grew up watching all of you guys too so this is a lot of fun um for you, you know, you're very knowledgeable between you and Alton, you, you guys pretty much know everything, but was there, you know, ever a point, a technique, ingredient, or any dishes that took you by surprise um, that you weren't expecting? All of it. <laughs> Honestly, to watch five Iron Chefs from five different cultural backgrounds, five different cooking styles, and then we have all the eight challengers come in, the amount of stuff I learned, it was like culinary school on like hyperactive, like speed. It was on, like incredible. If you can't go to culinary school, I'd highly recommend having my job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. easy, easy to get your yeah. job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are diamond dozen. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and then uh, for you, uh, Ming, um, Iron Chef Sai, I wanted to know um, what was it like for you to come into this and and be in competitive cooking? I think a lot of us are familiar with your cooking shows and your, and your restaurants. Uh, you've competed on Iron Chef before you battle duck with Bobby Flay and uh, also next Iron Chef, but I'm um, stepping into this role uh, now, kind of being in this competition mindset. Um, what kind of drew you to it and, and what's it been like? Uh, great question, Daniel. I, I actually kind of like KK, uh, I thought my knives, I thought I hung up my knives. I was done with competitions. Uh, I'm not that old, but for for <laughs> what we have to do, it's it, people don't realize it's physically demanding to do an Iron Chef. Those 60 minutes, those four, those they go so fast, and and you actually have to be in shape. You can't just you can't just walk around, right? And so I'm like, look, I'm 58, so there's no, I'm not going to do this. But when I got the call, I'm like, oh my god, how can you? This is this literally is a dream. Do you want to pitch at Fenway against the Yankees? I mean, how do you say no to that, right? I mean, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. I'm like, you know what? I, I, I'm so honored that, that to be even 
included in this. And I was so, once it sunk in, I'm like, are you kidding me? I, I get to be an Iron Chef? And then what the icing on the cake for me was, look at these other four chefs that mm -hmm. I get to be with, mm -hmm. to be in the room with these four other chefs. I mean, come on, Gabby and Dominique and Marcus and Curtis, incredible chefs. And also, and I'll say this to everyone in this room and this Iron Chef, incredible people. And I think that's one of the things that's so cool about, about this Iron Chef for me is that we truly are good friends and we really do have this mission as a group of Iron Chefs, which is to win, win, win and do it however we can. It's always, of course, through the knife and through the plating. Yeah. Um, so that leads me into one of my questions. If you could uh, battle against any one of your Iron Chef peers, who would you most want to go up against? <laughs> <laughs> None of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't want to go up against KK either. Um, oh my God, that, that's a great one. Uh, whew. There, it really, you know what? I would answer that depending on what the ingredient was. Mm. Because if it's a, uh, based on the ingredient, if it was like, you know, if it was duck again, I would love to see, I would go love to go up against Dominique because the French cook duck just as well as the Chinese cook duck, right? So I, I would love to see the juxtaposition of those two dishes. If it was a, a really good, beautiful piece of meat, then Curtis, because he is the you know a pro at grilling and lighting fires, the you know, beach of Tom Wood, things like that. Anything south of the border, I, I would love the honor to compete against Gab. You know, Gabrielle is such an amazing finesse chef with super simple flavors. Uh, and then Marcus, that's the melting pot, you know, that could be a crazy ingredient. And then I think Marcus and I would have a blast cooking with that. So a little all over the place, but it really does depend for me on, on the ingredient. Yeah. Um, I guess that kind of relates to another question, which would be, uh, for any of you, if you could, um, design your own battle, choose, choose the ingredient or choose the theme or parameters, what might that look like? Or would you throw any kind of curve balls or, or, um, anything like that? Um, I'll go first. I, I would, I would love to see, um, some really short challenges, like five minute and 10 minute challenges, mm. like simple, um, could be the egg challenge. It could be the celery challenge, but something that literally that out of the box, you truly get five minutes with that ingredient go and, uh, no, no time to even think because by the time you think of this, you've already lost a minute. So you literally have to cook literally with blinders on instinctually because you don't have time to think about a dish. I think that'd be really cool. I think it'd be really entertaining to have to cook without sous chefs because I think there's a lot that obviously we need yep. our teams for, but I also think there's a lot that can be told and you walk away feeling stronger, better, um, you know, more educated in so many different ways when you have to just do it by yourself. You realize what you're capable of and I think that's a position that is terrifying but also sounds really fun. I went trekking in the Himalayas and I saw these um, Sherpas cooking these amazing meals on a little campfire. I would love to see our iron chefs cook on a log fire or campfire just with natural heat. Mmm, prepare yourself, <laughs> Iron Chef Tsai. <laughs> That's why I always carry a lighter. <laughs> Uh, Ming, I had a question for you. So um, Next Shark, we're a primarily Asian and Asian American news um, publication. So I wanted to ask you, just with your background and having introduced audiences to Chinese um, and Asian cuisine uh, in general from just all of your cooking shows, and I guess this relates back to now being an Iron Chef and being able to, um, you know, represent uh, your cooking and your cultural heritage. What what does that mean to you, especially in this time right now where we've been seeing a lot of anti-Asian hate um, and especially restaurants being hit hard by the pandemic? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's such a humble position to be in, uh, to, to be able to represent, you know, all Asians, right? Not just Chinese, but, uh, and I, I've said this many times, to, to be able to be in front of the world. I mean, Netflix is the world now, not just the U.S. Um, and literally at the exact same level as the other four iron chefs just raises raises the bar for all of us uh from asia and you know the this whole asian hate at, at, unfortunately i understand it 
and unfortunately, it's here. It's it's never not been here. Mm-hmm. Same for you know, <laughs> same for all the discrimination against against gays, against African Americans, against Jews, against everyone. Right? This hate that's in this world is horrible. Um, but we have an opportunity to combat that hate with kindness. And one of the best way to show kindness is actually through a plate of food, right? Because when you actually are making a dish for, of course, your friends and family that you love, but for people that maybe don't see eye to eye to you, right? It's, there, there's an opportunity with a plate of food because you're giving a part of yourself every time you make a plate of food. And, and that's, and, and that makes you a little bit vulnerable because, you know, if your food's not great, you, you, you can, you, you just iron chef too. You're like, God, I hope you like it. Right. But when you have intention on making that plate of food, it's like, I really want you because I love to discuss what our differences are. That's the first step of changing what's going on. We just got to change a person and maybe that person will change the next person, et cetera, et cetera. I think Matthew McConaughey yesterday, this is not about Asian hate, but this whole thing with gun violence, same, same thing though. We have to crush these problems with kindness. That's the only secret ingredient, kindness. What a beautiful answer. Thank you so much. And thank you um, all of you for your time. Again, I, I grew up watching all of you. Um, Kristen, I'm an adoptee as well, and uh, I'm from Seattle. So uh, watching you on Top Chef was amazing. Um, and yeah, this has been a, a dream come true for me to talk to you guys. So i um, really excited for the rest of the show and wishing you all the best. And I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. you too.